human activity is driving climate change. As the world becomes more and more connected and everything moves to the cloud, data centers are consuming more and more power. Today, data centers consume nearly 2% of the world's global electricity, and the advent of cloud computing and artificial intelligence leads experts to predict that data center energy consumption will only continue to grow. Here at Princeton, a team of researchers has been assembled to rethink the way we power microprocessors. Throughout the development of computing, chip manufacturers have been able to keep shrinking the size of transistors and fitting more into a chip while increasing their speeds and decreasing their operating voltage. Recently, the limits of this have been pushed, and while transistors keep on getting smaller, the power densities of these chips have started to increase very rapidly. Now at the same time, the overall area of these chips continues to get larger and larger to support the computationally expensive processes that are the backbone of services that we now all use like cloud computing and artificial intelligence. As a result of these trends, microprocessors that were once consuming power in the tens of watts now require power in the range of kilowatts. An emerging trend to increase the amount of power delivered into data centers and improve the efficiency is to distribute power at 48 volts instead of 12 volts, which reduces the current to the same amount of power. So the challenge then becomes, how do we design power converters that can take 48 volts and step it down to deliver the low voltages and ultra high currents needed by microprocessors? How do we design them with power densities that approach those of the processors themselves? Our solution utilizes a merged two-stage architecture. It consists of a two-to-one switch capacitor on regulated stage and a four-phase buck regulated stage whose operations are coupled together. The typical large decoupling capacitor between the two stages is removed, enabling higher power density. So the first stage operates at a lower switching frequency to improve the system efficiency, while the second stage operates at a higher switching frequency to improve the system's speed. Now what's shown here is one submodule of this topology. And the nice thing about this topology is that it can be extended to further submodules, almost akin to Lego blocks. And hence we call this architecture the linearly extendable group operated point of load architecture. To handle the high output current needed by processors, a common approach is to use multiple converters running in parallel. But these approaches require active control to guarantee that each converter delivers an equal amount of current. One major advantage of this architecture is that it automatically balances the input voltages and shares the output current evenly through each submodule without the need for increased control complexity. Recently, both Intel with their PowerVIA technology and Tesla with their Dojo technology have adopted vertical power delivery, where power is delivered from the voltage regulator directly to the power pins of the processor. So this greatly reduces the distance between the voltage regulator and processor and can enable placement of multiple processors close together with more area available for signal routing, resulting in many system level advantages. So to enable vertical power delivery, we developed a customized four-phase coupled inductor for the buck second stage with the power coming in from the bottom of the core and out from the top. It has a very small footprint and leverages the well-known benefits of multi-phase coupling. We implemented a three submodule converter within the area of 770 millimeters squared. Each submodule steps one-third of the input voltage, in this case 16 volts, down to 8 volts, and then the second stage steps the voltage down to 1 volt, and each submodule delivers just one-third of the 780 amps overall output current. Here you can see the power stage of each part of the circuit, as well as how they are vertically assembled together. So once the power stage and gate drives are assembled, we then take this and place it onto an output interface board that we fabricated to do the experiments in our lab. Uh, so power enters in from these top terminals here, goes through the circuit and exits from these large terminals and interfaces with the electronic load. We then take this entire system and we place it into a container and we submerge the system in mineral oil to replicate the immersion cooling setups that are now being used for processors that consume a large amount of power. Pumps are used to circulate the liquid and cool down the converter. The system is shown running at its full load condition under liquid cooling stepping down 48 volts to 1 volt at an output current of 780 amps. The junction temperature of the semiconductor devices is stable at 95 degrees Celsius. The switch capacitor stage splits the input voltage and the buck stage regulates the output voltage. We achieve a peak efficiency of 91.1% and a full load efficiency of 79.2% without the gate driving losses included. We benchmarked our converter with other 48 volt to 1 volt converters both from academia as well as from industry, and ours maintains a good efficiency while achieving a density of 0.59 amps per millimeter squared. With the liquid cooling setup, we achieve one amp per millimeter squared and 1,000 watts per cubic inch. We'd like to thank our collaborators at Google, Intel, and Dartmouth for making this research possible, and if you'd like to see our full results, scan the QR code to read the preprint of our paper. Thanks for watching.